my viewpoint is that relationships are the spice of life. That's where the juice of life is. It's like, what is the point of having something if you can't share it with someone else? It's not anywhere near as fun. And so, you know, what I'm optimizing for is my relationships. I'm doing everything in, in my life is designed specifically around my marriage with my wife. That's kind of like my core thing. It's what we're doing together. And then our social life and our work life is like designed to give us the ability to be able to have an active social life and also create surplus where we can, you know, have that spill out onto our, you know, community around us and, and the world at large. So, so I'm into it. I think, I think being intentional about socializing is, a, is as important as being intentional about health and wellness. I, I would be curious to hear of everything you know about relationships. If you could distill, if there's one defining attribute where if you, if you had to say, okay, this is the one thing I think is the, the, the penultimate thing to keep in relationships for healthy relationships, whether that's marriage or friendships or family relationships or business relationships, what would that be? Because I have an answer to that and I, I like asking this question. So I'm curious, I'll share mine when I'm done, but what do you think that would be if you had to name one? I'm going to give you two. One is macro and one is micro. At a macro level, people are goal oriented and production oriented in their relationships. So basically, you know, in society, you're taught that you got to chase success, success at all costs, everything in, in the way you got to make money, you got to go out there and do it. And so generally in people's relationships, they are oriented towards goals and getting places instead of being present and enjoying the relating with the other person as the goal and whatever production comes is as a side effect of enjoyable relating. So not trying to get anywhere. I mean, yes, it's fun to collaborate on a project and try to achieve things, but not at the expense of the relationship feeling good and that, and not, not moving faster than, than any one party is interested in moving, like really taking people into account to the level at which you don't move beyond their level of comfort, right? You, you stay with them in pace with where they are. You move as fast as the slowest person wants to move in relationship to whatever the goals are or in relationship to whatever the production cycle is. And then how that actually works in practice is this piece of lingo that comes from Morehouse, which is a place I grew up called a withhold. And what a withhold is, is it's a value judgment that carries negative, ch negative emotional charge that you make about someone and you don't tell them. So as an example, let's say you and I are in the kitchen and you step on my foot and you don't notice it. And I think to myself, man, Andrew's a real prick. He's always bumbling around, not paying attention to anyone around him. Feet and are huge, to be fair. I mean, it's, it's probably wasn't my fault. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, I, just, <laughs> I give the example. <laughs> so you step on my foot. I'm upset about that. I don't express it. I have now made a negative value judgment about you and I have withheld that from you. And what happens in relationships of all kinds is these build up and these build up and these build up until one day you step on my foot and I fly off the handle and I'm leaving you if, if you're my partner. And it's not, it's not, it's, it's a combination of all these times where I've made these value judgments about you, but not express them. And so there's all this distance between us, all this buildup between us. And the re, the way to be successful in relationship is do not let that happen. Like whenever something happens, positive or negative, acknowledge it, talk about it, have it be more important than whatever the production cycle is, whatever the goal is. Like most people are like, oh, I got this goal or I'm too busy or we're trying to do this thing. It's not the right time. No, that is a recipe for disaster. It's more important that things feel good between you and the person you're relating with than anything else. And that guarantees the longevity of the relationship. If you clean as you go, if you don't let these things build up. And then the same thing goes with positive withheld value judgments, things that you think positively about someone that you then don't express and keep to yourself. What feels good when you acknowledge what someone did that was good or what someone did that felt good. And the more you acknowledge someone, the more seen they feel and the nicer they are and the more they like you. And it kind of builds that sort of positive equity within the relationship. But the key is the negative ones. Don't let them build up clean as you go. Have the, have, have how it feels between you and the person you're relating with be more important than any goal or production cycle. And you will be successful. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And I think Annie and I have a, a word for that. It's called a rift. Like if we feel like there's that, that, cause you can feel it, right? Like sometimes you don't even know why it's there and you know, something has happened, but you're either in a great relationship and you, you have the smiles when you pass and you know, things are in, things are good. And then you can just sense if you've been married for more than about three weeks, you can sense like, or just in a relationship when something is off. Yeah. And the cleaner you get, the more untenable it gets to have things be off. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I know you only asked for one. I totally agree with you, but here's one more, which is a lot of people are victimized by their emotional state. And so they feel emotion and then they let that motion, emotion that they're feeling sort of dictate how they communicate instead of recognizing that emotion is something that you're feeling. And then you can choose how to behave based on how emotional you are. And so if you feel all like angry or, or agitated or upset or sad or happy or elated that you can like 
still communicate with your partner from a flat place. And one of the best things that you can do is talk to somebody else and run off your, your emotional charge. Let's say you're upset at a friend. Instead of talking to them while you're upset, go talk to someone else, run off all your charge that when you approach the friend, even though you might be upset about something, you can communicate with them in a way that they can hear. Because if you communicate with them while you're angry, they will not hear what you say. They will just hear the anger. So I feel like understanding that you're separate from your emotional state is one that a lot of people struggle with. Yeah, that's a really good one. And it's probably a lot of times healthy to talk to a third party about it. But I think also my, my, I got to give my mom a lot of credit for this. A lot of times my mom growing up, she would say something maybe in relation to us, we were crazy kids or to my dad, like, or she'd just tell us like, I'm really upset and emotional about this. And I know it's not val valid and I know it's not logical or reasonable, but like I'm feeling this way and it's really making me upset. And so she was simultaneously being able to acknowledge those emotions and talk about them and share them so that we knew she was going through that, but also, you know, also be able to acknowledge that, Hey, I realize this is a, kind of, I'm kind of being, kind of being crazy in, in, in her words, right? Like, cause it's, she understands it's not valid. And so I feel like if you can do that too, with, with your spouse or your partner, it lets that other person vent. And on the other side of like, you're reciprocating that. I think it's really healthy and important to be able to say, Hey, I totally understand, uh, empathize with those feelings. And even if you don't, like, even if you fundamentally disagree and think, yeah, you're crazy. Like, how are you having this reaction? It doesn't make sense. Thinking in your mind, like in their reality, this is the emotional state they're in. And even though it's not logical, it's what they're experiencing and trying to have empathy for the emotion that they're going through. Even if you disagree with the logical premise. Totally. I love that. I mean, we're talking about communication fundamentally. And, and one of the other things that happens is people forget that relationships take investment, right? Like if you want a good sex life, if you want romance, if you want fun, that you have to actually make time for that stuff. And that like, what happens is cycles build up. Hey, I got to take out the trash. Hey, we got to take care of the cat. Hey, we got to take care of the, the kids. Hey, I got to do my work. And it's just like, you become like sort of de facto roommates and partners because you forget to invest in the areas that brought you to the dance in the first place, which was going on dates together and having fun together and spending time with just nothing to do, but talk to one another. And so I mean, this is a, I see this happen a lot. It's a common, I said, I was telling you before the podcast that I sat in literally thousands of hours of relationship counseling growing up. So my parents did. So I was able to sit in on those rooms. And, and this is a common experience that people have is they just kind of forget because life gets so busy and that, that they forget to kind of invest in the relationship in the areas that are what initially got them together. And it's really easy to counterbalance that. You just start, you just set up a date night once a week and you just kind of take it from there. Mm -hmm.